Welcome, it shows the infinity here. I hope everyone is having an amazing blessed day. This is another video about the great city of Lviv, Lemberg, Leopolis, the Lion City. As you may know, my previous video was about Old World Lviv, in which I presented the oldest photos I managed to find of this city and photos throughout the ages. Well, in this video, I want to talk more about some specific parts of Lviv's history and ask some questions about this history. This video was also partially inspired by a great comment left by the user Kate Emma on my previous Lviv video who really sparked me to look further into the history of Lviv in which I'm presenting right now. Without further ado, let's get to the first segment of this video. And that is, what I want to look at and explore into a little bit is, was Lviv a star city? And this is on the assumption that you guys already know the ideas and theories behind what a star fort, a bastion fort, and what a star city is, and the idea that they could have been used as something else in previous history. The way I want to do this is by presenting firstly many of old maps of Lviv which as I have stated many times goes by multiple names and I just want to look through these old maps and looking at the city and if there's any interesting things about them. So as I'm looking here 1720 on the map of Ukraine you can see that Lviv here is highlighted in red and it's in this peculiar shape that many of us, us would call like a star fort or bastion fort type of shape and you can see there's got multiple names so I'm on this site historical maps of Galicia Galicia being the region of Eastern Europe in history and there's many of these maps of Galicia and here is a 17 75 map and it's called this name and here you zoom in and you see Lvov, Leopolis, Lemberg and what I find interesting about this one is that it's got this fort, central fort, fort formation and on the east, northeast of it you have another formation which I find to be very interesting so just keep that in mind for further research, I guess. On to the next map. This one I tried earlier and it doesn't open to a full screen. Um, you can look at this one. Yep. Um, same map of Galicia. And if we zoom in on Lemberg here, you can see it's some kind of castle. And many of the roads lead to Lemberg or Lviv, which suggests that in history it was definitely a historical and important city. And obviously it was a crossroad between Europe and Asia at a time. This is the Rizzo map of East and West Galicia, 1805. You can zoom in on Lviv, see Lemberg. And what I want to point out here is this weird, I shouldn't say weird, but peculiar looking symbol. Looks like Caduceus. Onto the next map. This one is from 1820, and on this one, I found very peculiar because there's many symbols surrounding Lviv, which shown as a castle. They look like Christian and almost alchemical symbols as well. Check out this map. Get get it in the right position. Lemberg, this one's named as Lemberg, and here you can see a more distinctive fort shape of Lemberg, and also this symbol, which to me looks like the symbol for Mercury. And this is interesting because obviously, this line of research and many theories that resolve around, revolve around this type of research looks closely at Mercury and you know, ether and 
energy and mercury is an element that comes up quite a lot so i found that interesting that next to lemberg is this chemical element symbol for mercury and that's just something that i just want to throw out there i think there's a later map that also shows this symbol as well looking at this next map here zoom in on Lviv or Lemberg it says here you can see the city is broken into multiple parts and on the left side you can see a flag and next to that is another pole which I'm not really sure what that is for moving on from this one here 1846 now Lemberg here is not really shown as a distinctive city it's just red dots and no longer looks like a star fault moving on this again has this mercury looking symbol and I think this was more clear that it looks like mercury to me anyway let me look at this one and I think these are just train tracks, I assume they're train tracks. And obviously it doesn't look like this supposedly star fault any, anymore. But in the previous ones, more further back in history, they certainly do. So I don't know what's going on there. And here you can see more distinctively and has more parts to it. And it doesn't exactly look like your typical bastion fort anymore. And here it just goes into the 20th century, these maps. And... The Vive kind of fades away as being the central, you know, part of Galicia and comes up as almost looking like a star fort, so to speak. And so here is the Google Maps of nowadays Lviv. And obviously, if you look back at the most oldest maps that I've shown here, the city doesn't exactly look like a bastion fort. And it was the, I think it was the second one I presented at the north east ish there's like a second part of the another fort connector next to it but if you look at google maps these days you can't really exactly see that but what i also find interesting and what's linked with this theory of you know star force so to speak is the idea of water and next to lviv has all these i think they look like canal waterways and look artificial that is actually quite a nice transition to the next segment of the video. But before I want to do that, I wanted to look at the forts and fortification of Lviv in the first place. So I'm on this same website called www.forgottengalicia.com and this article, Remnants of Lviv's Medieval Fortification. Because obviously, looking at the old world maps of Galicia and Lviv we see this fort so here you can see construction of Lviv's fortification began in 1362 which over the next couple of centuries resulted in four powerful lines of defense and you got some nice illustrations of the fort so the first line of defense constructed of stone and brick was called the high wall had 17 gates and yeah so this city was also quite a defensive city if looking from the mainstream narrative that is the second line or the low wall with bastions dates from 1418 the third line was constructed at the end of the 15th and early 16th centuries to defend against medium caliber enemy artillery looking at these forts and here you can see some forts and some defense that were put up by the inhabitants at the time and it just goes through these different arsenals as well I also want to quickly bring your guys attention to this castle called Pithusti Castle which is located 80 kilometers east of Lviv 
and here's Google Maps of the castle and distance away from Lviv. And here from Wikipedia, it was constructed by this guy between 1635 and 1640 by the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And at the last centre, it says, on the place of the older fortress. And that's interesting because, obviously, its shape is like a bastion fort. So they built this castle on top of a pre-existing fort that we don't fully know when was exactly built. So that's just interesting. And it's just located... 80 kilometers away from Lviv. So I've got this very obvious statement here that reads, like any flourishing city, Lviv has access to water. Water is obviously essential for humans to survive. And it also plays a huge key vital role for any city to thrive. Like any ancient and old city, Lviv has a plentiful of wells and fountains to supply water to its people. And nowadays, many of these ancient wells and fountains are concealed and hidden in plain sight. Anyways, I just want to look at the history between Lviv and water, since it's such a key role in its history. So on the left side here, you've got this park in Lviv, and it has a cistern. And in this article, it reads, as the information about the work associated with the laying of water pipes were strictly classified. No documents, you know, have been found to show where the water supply facilities were located. So this means that when people built Lviv and they managed to get a water from, assuming from a river or a source, they never documented how they connected the pipes to the source which I find, you know, highly suspicious. The One of the most important part of survival, and yet you don't document this in any way, for any shape or form. And you even classify this information privately, which seems slightly strange to me. But moving on. So, if you go to Lviv, or if you have been to Lviv, and you go on the highest point, and you look over the city, you will not see any visible flowing water or a water source at all. And you may question yourself, or you may ask question, where does the water come from to supply this great city? And that is because you have to look underground of Lviv to find the answers. For example, you have to look under Lviv's central street called Freedom Avenue and underneath Lviv's theatre of opera and ballet to see the answers to this question. So the main river that flows in Lviv's oblast is called the Poltva River and this river actually flows directly under Lviv. And looking further, here is the reason why Lviv has a river underneath it. Just to paraphrase this chunk of text, it basically says by the 19th century, Lviv was a fast-growing hub city for the Habsburg Empire. And as this city developed and modernised, there was public health risks and threats, such as outbreaks of malaria. So they decided to encase over this river, routing the river through the city's sewer system and by 1870, 15 kilometres of the river flowing through the main part of the city was covered. So it's quite a simple explanation for why they covered this river and that is because of public health issues. On to the next segment, which is the Union of Lublin, Mound, slash Copier. Now, what this is, is an artificial hill created in the years 1869 to 1890 by the Polish inhabitants to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the Union of Lublin. By this wealthy 
person called Franciszek Smolka, and it is located on the summit of Lviv High Castle. The two illustrations you see here are actually engravings from the 17th century showing a panoramic view of the city. And here in the bottom left corner, I got a text out from an article and I've just highlighted some parts that I want to bring your guys' attention to. So here it says, The High Castle took its name from a defensive fort which was located on the hill from the 13th century to the late 19th century. So this artificial hill to commemorate the Union of Lublin was put on top of a much older historical site which is this castle, this fortress that was existing since the 13th century. And to me, I don't really understand why they chose to put it on a much older site which in itself has a lot of history to the city. So I just find that a bit strange. And this second part that I highlighted, it says, the work was carried out without any prior engineering advice, using locally available materials, including stones from the ruin, ruins of High Castle. So again, they use materials from this existing structure and they built it on top. Before I carry on, I also want to state that I am aware that this mound creating thing is almost a Polish thing to do. For example, if you look towards the north from Lviv, you have the city of Krakow in modern Poland. And there are also existing multiple mounds in that city alone. So I just want to put that out there. Continue on with a little bit of history on this high castle before it became the Union of Lublin Mound. So the first fortifying structure appeared on the high castle in the time of Halch Volhynia and were built by Leo I of Halch from wood and over a succession of time it was destroyed and therefore when the Polish king Casimir III came along he decided to build a new castle, but out of stone. And this is going to become the castle ruins, which was used for the mound. And you will see this later down in this video. And so this was done in the year 1362 and was called High Castle from then on. During Austrian times, it was called Sound Mountain. And after its visit from the emperor in 1851, it was called Franz Joseph Mountain. Here is a photo before the construction of the mound, before the year 1869. And from this, you can gather why it was obviously an advantage to build a castle on top of this hill. Here are two photos of the castle ruins on Castle Hill from construction of the mound. And so some of these ruins were used for the mound as well. And here is a photo from modern day. This is basically the lone remaining surviving evidence of this medieval castle that was once vital for the city's survival. These two photos are depicting the people who piled up all the materials for this mound and as you can see there's a, a lot of them and I also want to recite from earlier these people were not qualified and had no previous experience in doing such engineering. There's a nice postcard from around the year 1906 and on the right here is the bust of the Polish inhabitant who was the initiative for this idea of creating the mound which commemorates the Union of Lublin. This is Lviv's own chance to shine as a city. The Galician General Regional Exhibition of 1894. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I love exhibitions and expositions 
that occurred in history because I find them to be fascinating and a real celebration for humankind. So anyways, the largest fair in the history of Lviv was this exhibition on the 100th year anniversary of the this rising. I'm not, I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I'm probably going to get it wrong. The aim of the exhibition was to promote Lviv as a modern metropolis and demonstrate Galicia's economical and cultural progress since its gaining political autonomy a couple decades earlier. In four months, the exhibition attracted over a million visitors to the city, despite in itself only having a hundred thousand industrial and art pavilions, Galician village and the cableway over the park, technical forums, football games and concerts, first electric fountain and electric tram was presented at this exposition. So here I'm just showing some of these pavilions and these amazing works of art that was present during this exhibition. Out of all of these pavilions, only three buildings survived this exhibition. These are the Palace of Art, Parorama, Rotunda and the Water Tower. These are what they look like in modern day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new. And be sure to support me on my Patreon and follow my other social media. The links are in the description.